guys and welcome back to another tutorial for Amp Creator. So last week I opened up a poll for basically seeing what you guys wanted for the next tutorial and the majority of you, 64% of you uh, that voted uh, wanted the auto smelt thing even though that it's really simple to do. So I will show you how that all do, uh, how that's all done and I thought I would start with just showing you you know that it does work and there's no manipulation in the video or anything like that because god only knows right so let's uh just quickly mine some of these blocks so you can see it gave us some stone for these ones and if we go over here as you can see that it gave us some iron ignits and if we go over here it'll take a little bit longer to mine but we will get some gold ignits as well and as you can see, the block doesn't drop. So that's an important feature to make sure that that doesn't happen. So let's hop into mCrater and I'll show you how really simple it is to set up. So the first thing that we need to do is create our tool. And you might want to adjust the properties depending on how you want it set up. Uh, this is only a harvest level level one, which doesn't really make, does that make sense? Stone. I think stone's level one, so I don't know why it's mining gold. It shouldn't be mining gold, but whatever. And then the procedure that we want is basically when block destroyed with tool. So with the procedure, what we're doing is we're making an if statement. So to do that, what we would want to do is go to our flow control, grab a the third if statement down here. That'll get us started with uh, most of it. You can add the click on the gear icon to basically add more and then you can drag and drop the amounts that you want in there. So what we need to do is actually test for the block. As you can see up here, I'm testing for if it's stone that's being broken, if it's iron ore, or if it's gold ore, and those are the three conditions that I have. So in order to do that, what you wanna do is go to logic, grab on the yellow operator, and then you want to go to Minecraft components, grab a yellow item selector, and this will be for blocks. You want to select the block that you want to test if it's being mined. So in our case, I basically selected stone, which is that one right there. And then you want to go to block procedures and scroll down until you see get block at. And then that's one setup. Now you could probably just duplicate this a couple times and select the other ones as you want. So that one would be uh, iron ore, and this one would be gold ore. So when you have your blocks all set up, what you need to do is you need to spawn a gem. Now that's under a world management, and then there is spawn gem, and then there's a coordinates add, added onto it. Now we need to adjust the coordinates just a little bit. If we were to spawn them just as is, it would basically spawn them at the block access location. So the bottom negative corner, I believe. So negative Y, negative X, negative Z corner. So it's easier just to uh, offset it and put it in the center, which uh, if you want to do that, you need to go to math operators, grab a math operator here. You also need a number and you're going to set this number to 0 0.5 and then what you're going to do is duplicate this three times Oops. and then when you have that all set up you can just drag and drop your X Y and Z coordinates in and then you can just drop them right in here so now you want to select what block you want to actually drop so we're going to select stone for this one and then we're gonna select duplicate this and then select iron ignits. So we need to go to items and then select iron ignits. And then we are gonna need gold ignits as well. So we're gonna duplicate that one more time. And we're going to go to items and then we're gonna select the gold ignit. The last thing that you can see that's happening in the, the procedure is we're removing the block. So if we were to actually not remove the block after this, it might drop the actual block itself, which could be used as a dupe, like a duplication bug. So what we need to do is go to a block prop uh, procedures and then we're gonna scroll down until we find remove block at and then the coordinates and we're just going to drop that after the item is generated 
And what that will do is it will remove the block from existence, but still spawn the item. So the item will be spawning is the item that we set. And it's really that simple. Like it, it, there's nothing else going on here. There's no extra global triggers or anything like that. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. It's a simple one, I know, but you guys wanted it. So hopefully next week we'll have something in more interesting. I'm trying to keep it a little bit balanced for the the what votes might get for the between the two of them, but it's a hard challenge to do. So I might just try something completely different and see what ones you guys want so it might be something a little bit different than tools uh, next week so outside of that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out